I don't know if I've ever shared this with anybody, but I, I looked at Tiffany when we first started going down this road, and she understood what, what I believed was coming, and I said, Tiffany, you're Jewish, and God forbid anything like this ever happens, but uh, uh, my family will protect yours. And then I jokingly said to her, now if it goes the other way around, you've got to protect my family. And in the years since we first started working together, uh, we started talking and, and I said, I think we're both going to be in trouble. But we didn't see what was coming. Today, I said to Tiffany, who would have thought they would come for the Christians first? I have warned for a while that we are headed for real trouble. And it's a combination of things that causes it. It is the combination of the death of the heart and the values of the West and the um, combination of that with the collapse of economies and systems and food and, and, and the chaos. And then somebody who needs power, wants power, starts to blame it on another group and everybody's so willing to do that because they just want somebody to pay for the misery that they're in and they start killing but because of the West collapsing the values in our heart collapsing nobody says anything this is the way it's happened every time um, the last time we saw it happen was in in Germany what's what has always saved in the last 200 years what has saved the world has been the American people have kept the heart and soul alive and the West has oh you show bad things you show a kid being uh, molested by a teacher you you show somebody getting killed and gunned down in the streets and all of a sudden the West cares and that's why they've always tried to manipulate our media you know, over in the Middle East they show they show Palestinians being killed and we care and we rise up and we say that's got to stop but what happens? What happens when the West doesn't care anymore? Remember, Gandhi was only successful with the British in India because of the Western understanding of justice. He knew if the West just sees good people getting slaughtered, we stop it, we stand up. Martin Luther King said this, when you show the American people and the West good and evil side by side, they will choose Martin Luther King was right. And what I feared is the Bonhoeffer effect. That when a society goes too far down the drain, it no longer cares. And then Bonhoeffer and all the civil rights movements and everything else no longer mean anything. They have bastardized civil rights movements so much that we don't even hear the word civil rights anymore. I, 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 I'm, I'm begging you to not let your flame go out. And I'm going to ask you tonight to go to your church and you demand that they start paying attention to what's happening in Egypt. If you are watching us in Israel, if you are Jewish, I'm begging you, Please stand up for the Christians. You have and you know you have had my solemn vow to stand by you. And I have. And I've never thought that they would come for Christians first. I, I have planned for the Jews to be taken first and us to have to stand. And, and uh, I've, that's how I've envisioned all of this to happen. But now it's not happening that way. They're coming for the Christians first. We need Christians to stand up and care, and we need our Jewish friends and neighbors to stand up and care, because we have a common foe, hatred. In Egypt, the military is now vowing to crush the Muslim Brotherhood uprising. They have tried to cut the head of the snake, 
uh, off as they have um, many of the Muslim Brotherhood leaders in custody, but it's only going to be, it's only going to get worse. They are regrouping. The Muslim Brotherhood just announced a new leader days earlier in a scene repeated in many cities. 10,000 Islamists marched down the streets chanting, and I'm going to quote, Islamic, Islamic, despite the Christians. I don't know if it rhymes better in Arabic, but that's what they were saying. The adults watched um, as kids from their mob spray-painted buildings. Boycott the Christians is what that says. This is the night of broken glass. Insults were hurled via spray paint, calling revered leaders dogs. But the real purpose of the march wasn't to slander, but to prepare. Christian homes, stores, churches were all being marked with large crosses and black X's, and the town froze in fear. Anyone, anyone could seek shelter inside did. Anyone outside kept a safe distance from the protests. They were right to be afraid. A short time later, the attacks began. More than 60 churches would be vandalized, attacked, burned to a crisp, burned to the ground. Homes and businesses were targeted. Even youth even youth clubs and orphanages were hit. Breaking the still of the night, five or six erotic Islamists armed to the teeth came bursting through the gates, breaking through the glass and ravaging the church, stripping of it anything valuable, computers, TVs, everything. And following close behind in an obviously coordinated effort, more terrorists showed up in trucks. They run off with the loot, and the Islamists finished the job, setting the church on fire, destroying everything in sight. God forbid there was a woman around. Forced to seek cover, citizens could only lay in wait for the threat to pass as they watched their churches slowly burn to the ground. One church had to cancel services this weekend for the first time in 1,600 years. The people in Bene Mazar waited for the radicals to leave. When they finally did, they scrambled out, put the massive blaze that had raged on for hours because no fire trucks are coming for the Christians. They had no way to put the fire out. It had grown too large. The authorities were nowhere in sight. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future, America. Imagine all hell breaking loose and no sirens, no sign of help. Citizens are on their own because they're Christians. Eventually, they were able to locate the keys to a fire truck. They were able to subdue the fire, but it was too late. The church was charred beyond recognition. Today, there's been a lull in the violence, but Christians remain in their homes. Tomorrow is a high holy day in that part of the world. In many cases, people saw their own neighbors joining in on the protest. Imagine that. Imagine taking a quick glance, peering, peeking through that window, afraid to have anybody see you, and then seeing, oh my gosh, that's my neighbor. They have been unable to sleep or rest for days, not knowing if someone will burst through their door at any moment, take their kids, rape their women, wielding torches, wielding guns. That's the evil. Now let me give you a little bit of hope, let me give you some good. While the physical structures are being destroyed, and in some cases, people are destroyed, the Christian faith remains solidly intact. In one church, everything burned but the altar. And it didn't stop the priest and the deacons and the members of the church from showing up to celebrate Mass. An Egyptian blogger tweeted this image. I wanted to show it to you tonight. Because during the service, men held up signs behind the deacon that read, My extremist brother, I came to pray for you. We are still brothers. I instructed the Blaze today to do what we did at Fox my last six months there, and that is fall on our store, sword. I know we're right on this story, um, and I know that we are currently the only ones covering it, I mean in real great detail, um, and even we are dropping the ball um, a bit, the mainstream media is not even there, but we are um, 
using all of the resources that we have to get the information. We have sources in Egypt that won't go on the air with us, but they will talk to our reporters. They're terrified. They're terrified. 